I'm Kirby Allison, and in today's video, I'm very excited to unbox a new box of cigars. This is the first time I've added this particular format to my humidor, and I'm also gonna talk about a new website you all should know about called Cigar Keep. Today, we get to unbox a brand new box of Cuban cigars, uh, and this is a really interesting format that I have yet to ever even smoke, uh, and it's the first time I've added this to my humidor. So very excited to kind of talk through what these are, show them to you, uh, and then uh, discuss a little bit about why I decided to pull the trigger on a few new cigars for the humidor. Now, first things first, new website you all should know about called Cigar Keep that is basically the seller tracker, but for Cuban cigar enthusiasts. Now, what's interesting about Cigar Keep is not only is it a community that allows everyone to get together and talk about their favorite Cuban cigars, write reviews, uh, and just share their take, but it's also, as I said, very similar to Seller Tracker, where you can actually list out the cigars that you have in your humidor. So for those of you that are interested in knowing what I have in my humidor, you can go onto my profile on Cigar Keep and see exactly what I have inside that beautiful box over there. But let's get started with the unboxing in today's video. So here we go. So let's open this up and see what we have. And I'll talk a little bit about why I bought them. All right, so here we are, unboxing day. Two boxes, uh, poor Laranas, and I'm probably saying that wrong, Monte Carlos. These are boxes of 25. Now this is a small box, as you'll very astutely notice. And so let's open these up and take a look at them. Okay. Pretty new box, this is box date of January, 2022. So uh, we probably wanna put a little bit of age on these. Open them up. There we go, poor Laranya, Lara Ranyan. And this is an incredibly thin ring gauge, long cigar. This was actually part of uh, Max's top 10 cigars of 2021. So this is quite a thin cigar. It is a 33 ring gauge. Now ring gauge uh, is how the diameter of a cigar is indicated. And it's basically how many 64ths of an inch uh, something is in its diameter. So this is 33 60 fourths of an inch, or otherwise known as a pretty damn small. Uh, and it is a little bit over six and a half centimeters long, uh, or 170 millimeters to be exact. Uh, and it's a beautiful, elegant format. Now this is without question, certainly a touch uh, on the narrow side. Uh, those that watch this channel know that I'm a big fan uh, of the Lanceros. Actually, I have some boxes right here that I wanted to show you. Uh, this is, of course, probably one of the most famous Lanceros to date. This is the El Rey de Mundo La Reina, which was uh, released to commemorate Queen Elizabeth. This was released as the Great Britain Exclusivo. This is a 38 ring gauge, uh, much longer. This is one of my favorite smokes of all time. Uh, I fell in love with this cigar whenever I smoked it. Incredibly elegant in the hand. And what I love about the length is that it gives the cigar tobacco time to warm up uh, and therefore really produce an evolution of flavor as you smoke through it. Uh, also because of its length, uh, it doesn't get too hot. I mean, if you have a real fat ring gauge cigar that is short, uh, whenever you are uh, puffing the cigar, uh, the smoke can really become quite hot uh, and it can burn your palate. You don't have to worry about this. Uh, this is one of my all time favorite cigars and really kind of re, it's how I fell back in love, if you will, of the smaller ring gauges. It just has an elegance to it and really fits in your hand. So whenever Max was talking about these cigars on Cigar Keep, I said, you know what? As I've begun smoking more during the afternoons, I find myself gravitating to the smaller cigars. Or like for instance, a Hoya de Monterey Petit Robusto, a great cigar, quick smoke, but again, a little bit thicker of a ring gauge, it's a 50 ring gauge, but it's short. And so as you get towards the end of that, it can really get, in my opinion, a little bit too hot if you're drawing the cigar too quickly. Something like this that's quite thin, again, is going 
going to keep that tobacco cooler or the smoke cooler as you smoke through it and still provide you that length. So really elegant cigar. Uh, I'm probably gonna fire one of these up today. Now, one of the other things I was talking about is the fact that I find myself enjoying shorter cigars during the day. And I wanted to share with you right now uh, something I bought recently, which is a Partagas Aristocrat, which really kind of falls into this category of thin ring gauge, incredibly elegant cigars. Uh, this is a box of the Partagas Aristocrat. Uh, actually, I bought four of these uh, just recently because I felt that it was something that I wanted to allow to age. And so in order to allow anything to age, you can't smoke through them. Uh, that's the challenge. And so you have to buy a lot of something so that you can smoke them while still not smoking through them all uh, before they have the opportunity to age. And I've enjoyed these so much that I actually just picked up four more boxes that I'll be adding to my keep uh, so that, again, I know that I'm going to be smoking these regularly, uh, but I still want some in my aging humidor so that they can mellow a little bit, as all Cuban cigars do with a little bit of time. And so, long story short, I needed more of these. Now, this is an incredibly elegant cigar, very similar to the Partagas um, Trinidad, which, again, is a 40 ring gauge. Now this is a five and one eighths inch long. Uh, and this to me is almost the perfect mid-afternoon smoke. Uh, this is a great cigar. Again, it's not too much of a time commitment, probably a 30 minute smoke, um, you know, for someone like me that smoked quite quickly. Again, it fits very elegantly in the hand. It's not too thick, it's not too intimidating. Uh, it's a medium body cigar. And I have to say, uh, it's really fast become uh, one of my favorites. Uh, I really enjoy this. Uh, it's one I enjoy quite frequently with friends. So uh, these are some of my new additions. Let's see, yep. Yeah, so we've got the Partagas Aristocrats right here. Uh, I've got the Monte Carlos, uh, which I just showed you, right, from Port La Araña. Uh, so join me as I go online to Cigar Keep uh, and we add these on. Okay, so here we are, let's go to Cigar Keep. Uh, let's see, cigarkeep.com. Uh, I'm already logged into my keep. And so as you can see, great website, great articles. Uh, look at that very handsome ambassador right there on the left. Um, they've got top rated cigars, reviews. Uh, these are all the new keeps. And this is what I love about it is, I don't even know who this person is. Uh, clearly he's into cigars and wine. Uh, and you can go into his keep right here and see that he's got this incredible uh, humidor. So he's got 78 boxes, 57 different varieties. Uh, and uh, let's see a Partagas 898 from uh, 98. I mean, that's a long time. Big 898 guy, he's got you know, nine box from 98. 2010, 2014, 2006. Some Ramon Ayona, especially selected, one of my favorite. I've got two cabinets of 50 of those. Uh, and you can kind of go down and see the various different cigars. Like, look at this, this is a, a Pantella, right? 33 ring gauge, seven inches long. So very similar to these Monte Carlos right here. Uh, and you know, you have an opportunity to review them. So nobody's reviewed that cigar, but uh, one day soon, I'm sure as uh, there's more users, you'll be able to see more and more reviews of these really kind of interesting cigars here. So, uh, and then you can take a look at my keep. So if you go to the ambassadors, you'll see we've got Tom Chamberlain, Alex Cigar Dandy, uh, me, right? We've got uh, uh, Max, of course, uh, uh, so many people. So I've got my keep on here. I've got 31 boxes, 26 different varieties. I've had 73 views, two appreciations, and make sure you follow me. Uh, and there we go. So let's add these on there right now. So these are brand, it's Poor La Araña. Let's see, do, 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 do. There we go. So Poor La Araña. Look, Monte Carlos came up first. This is a box from 2022. Yep, they both are. I've got a box and then I've got two boxes and I'm going to add those to my keep. So now you can see that now we've got the cigars right here. Uh, I can leave a review, view the cigar, edit how many I have, delete them, God forbid that I smoke through them. And so these actually haven't already already have a review. So there we go, Max Faux. It was at his recommendation I bought these. And he says, of course, a, a cigar that despite it supposedly being an unpopular Vitola is often enjoyed by those starting their journey into the world of Cuban cigars and aficionados alike. I find it such an elegant size and believe it to be a cigar that would have been better suited for life in the 1970s had it had a Candela wrapper. 
It is full flavor, not to be confused with strength. Uh, I don't find it to be a sweet cigar, although there are sweet aspects incorporated to its overall savory profile. There is an unmistakable pungency to this cigar that can often be misconstrued as youth. Interesting. This tartness gives way to gamey flavor that I find not dissimilar to that of Boulevard. Notes of earth and coffee prevail in the latest third. Uh, maybe they've smoked one of these on an episode of Falcon Suns. Incredibly good value, which it is. An incredible good value for the money and a cigar that Max can derive almost as much enjoyment from looking at as well as smoking. Well, uh, let's not look too long at these. Let's smoke one uh, and light them up. See how these are to be enjoyed. The new box, always fun to get that first one out. There we go. Again, small cigar so you can really feel of the tobacco leaf inside of this. New cutter. was taught how to properly light a cigar from uh, Eddie and Edward Sahakian. We have a video on how to properly light a cigar uh, with these two gentlemen. And one of the things that they taught me that I've really taken to heart is to never rush that process of lighting a cigar, to allow the tobacco to combust slowly, to not char it. And when that is done properly, that first puff, that virgin puff as Eddie just describes, is really so much more special and worth that wait. 